Welcome to White Lecture Online. In the previous video, we saw the concept of Ohm's law, where we saw that the current was proportional to the voltage applied and inversely proportional to the resistance in the circuit. But where does that resistance come from? Well, it's related to the resistivity of the materials in the circuit. In other words, resistivity is the property of a material that causes it to oppose a current, the flow of charges. We use the symbol rho for resistivity, and the unit for that is ohms times meters. And later on, we'll see how to manipulate resistivity or how to find the resistance of an object once the resistivity is known and the geometry or the structure of the object is known. But the resistivity, that property in a material that opposes the flow of charges, depends on three main things. First of all, it depends on the force or the energy required to remove an electron from an atom. After all, for charges to flow, you have to have free charges and you have to be able to rip them away from the atoms inside the conductor material. And so how much energy and force that requires, well, the more force it requires, the harder it is to free an electron in order to make it move to the circuit, the more energy it takes. So that would be one way that it could oppose the flow of charges. Secondly, and this is one of the main reasons, it's called the mean free path of the electrons. Once the electrons are ripped free from the atom, they can move from atom to atom, well, they'll move a certain distance before they collide with another electron or with an atom or a set of electrons there. And so the distance between those collisions is very important. The greater the distance, the more freely the electrons will flow. The smaller the distance, the more often they will bump into something, the more difficult it is for electrons to flow to the circuit. So the resistivity is proportional to that, to that mean free path, or actually, I should say, inversely proportional. The shorter the path, the, the greater the resistance, the longer the path, the less the resistance or resistivity. And it also depends on the Fermi velocity and the Fermi energy. Well, the Fermi velocity and energy, we'll get into that a little bit more in a later video, <clears throat> but it has to do in it has to do with the kinetic energy of the electrons or the particles inside a material at zero Kelvin and then the elevated energy need in order to move to the, to the material. So we remember that uh, the kinetic energy of, of a particle is one half mv squared so that the velocity is equal to the square root of twice the kinetic energy divided by the mass of the particle. There's a similar relationship between the Fermi velocity and the Fermi energy in that the Fermi velocity is equal to the square root of twice the Fermi, Fermi energy which is basically kinetic energy of the particles divided by the mass. Now it's sufficient to understand at this point that the drift velocity, which of course is related to the current, the greater the drift velocity, the greater the current, the smaller the drift velocity, the less the current, it's proportional to that distance between collision, the mean free path, divided by the Fermi velocity. Now, of course, the Fermi velocity is related and somewhat proportional to the energy, the Fermi energy. But here you can see that since the drift velocity is proportional to the conductivity, the freedom of the charges to move to the circuit is therefore, you can say that the greater the distance between collision, the greater the conductivity, and the greater the Fermi velocity, the smaller the conductivity, or the smaller the drift velocity. If we now want to look at the concept of resistivity, we can then see that if we take the inverse of that, 1 over the drift velocity is proportional to the resistivity. We can see the resistivity increases with increased Fermi velocity and decreases with an increased distance between collisions. So those are some of the major factors that control the ability for conductors to allow charges to flow. And it also involves the resistivity of the material, meaning that the greater or the, the smaller the distance between collision, the greater resistivity, and the greater the Fermi velocity, the greater the resistivity. So now we're going to take each one of these separately and take a close look at what controls the flow of charges and what controls the opposite or what provides the opposition to the flow of charges, which we call resistivity. And that's how we define it. 